Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. I recently received a very interesting email from a friend of the channel Shlomo Ishtof, who presented me with his hypothesis that the causeway of the Great Pyramid was actually a change from the original plan, something that was likely done after Khufu had died. In this video, I'll be looking into the hypothesis, looking at the evidence in favour, offering ideas for when it could have been done, and also the reason why such a change was worthwhile. If you're like me, I have to say you'll find this hypothesis somewhat compelling. I do think Ishtof is onto something, and this could well lead to new areas of exploration for archaeologists and independent researchers. Here we can see an artist's impression of the Great Pyramid, which shows the strange bow-legged shape of the causeway. On the face of it, it is a strange shape, especially for an overall pyramid project that was so perfectly planned, a project underpinned by perfect angles and straight lines that point to the four cardinal directions, and that's from the largest pyramid right down to the smallest mastaba. Ishtof only had to show me one diagram and give me an initial short explanation to make me see his very credible hypothesis. I'll start with this, the diagram he sent me of the Mastabas and satellite pyramids to the east of the Great Pyramid, and you can see they are all perfectly aligned along their northern edge, all except Mastabas G7810 and G7820. These are both situated to the south of the causeway and to the north of tomb G7510 and they do look to deviate from an initial plan, almost like they've been squeezed into a gap. They do look like later additions. Looking at the large mastaba G7510 for a start, and this is the tomb of Ankarf, who served as vizier and overseer of works for his half-brother Khufu. Alongside Hemiunu, he is thought to have been directly involved with the building of the Great Pyramid. So, this was one very important mastaba at Giza, hence the size. Clearly 4th dynasty, and clearly related to Khufu. But what about the two next to it? Well, G7810 belonged to Jati, a 4th dynasty prince. He was the son of Queen Merisank II, daughter of Khufu. His father could either have been Jadefrei Kafre or Merisang's first husband Horbaif, another son of Khufu. Mastaba G7820 belongs to Nefretkau, thought to be another child of Merisang II and granddaughter of Khufu. She is not to be confused with the wife of Khufu's son Khufu Kaf, who also had the same name. If these mastabas do belong to Khufu's grandchildren, it is likely they were built some time after Khufu's death, and the great explorer George Reisner agreed. He noted the style of decoration inside these mastabas was more in keeping with the times of Khafre and Menkore, and says, and I quote, they were built between the middle of the reign of Khafre and the middle of the reign of Menkore. It's also possible that these tombs belong to Jati II and a later woman named Nefretkau, and you could even place these mastabas in the 5th dynasty, the significance of which I'll come to later. Either way, these mastabas are believed by all to be from the final phase of work on the Eastern Cemetery. They were later additions to the older nucleus, being built in a different way using large slabs of grey pneumolytic limestone, being built on a sloping surface and also roughly dressed. The hypothesis states that originally, before being remodelled, the causeway would have run perfectly east to west. By superimposing the width of Khafre's causeway to run from the centre of Khufu's mortuary temple towards the east, and it neatly passes the satellite pyramids and important mastabas, but does run through mastabas G7810 and G7820. But as we've just seen, this doesn't actually cause us any problems, because these mastabas didn't come until Khafre's reign at the earliest, and the middle of Menkore's reign at the latest, maybe even in the 5th dynasty. The idea of an east-west causeway explains why the oldest part of the eastern cemetery has a perfectly straight northern edge, 
because these tombs would have been planned along the edge of Khufu's causeway. It would have been a neater plan and more in keeping with the overall pyramid project. So, some people may be thinking, OK, the causeway moved, so what? Well, now things get a little more interesting. I made a video in recent months on the tomb of Khufu's mother, Heta Perez I. She did not have some splendid satellite pyramid, her sarcophagus, canopic chest and grave goods were found in an unmarked pit located here. For me, this has always been a problem. The location is odd and out of place, and could well imply a hasty burial or reburial. Surely this would not be a long-held plan for Khufu's own mother, the wife of the powerful King Snefru. Surely she was worth more than a simple pit burial in the middle of a walkway between a mastaba and a satellite pyramid. I think that most would agree, but where was the intended resting place of Khufu's mother? Of course, and as many of you all know, most Egyptologists assign the first satellite pyramid known as G1A to Khufu's mother, due to the close proximity of her burial pit. But the truth is, there is really no evidence to link her to any of the three satellite pyramids. It seems mere guesswork, and I personally don't see any of the three satellite pyramids being her tomb. If G1A was her tomb, why is her sarcophagus, canopic chest and grave goods all inside another pit in the ground? Why were these not found inside G1A? So, do we have another missing pyramid? Well, if we remodel the causeway to the original plan and fill in the boat pit, which can only come when the second causeway was built being placed next to it, and well, we do have enough space cleared to have another satellite pyramid to the north of the original causeway. It is in a prime position for such a prominent ancient queen and mother of the present king. A pyramid here would also make sense when we put the causeway back to its position, and this pyramid would actually stand out, being somewhat set apart from the others, in its own pride of place position. So, boat pit aside, and what do we find in this position? We have the famous so-called trial passages, dug in the ideal location if they actually were the passages of a satellite pyramid. But now we have a problem, because the trial passages are off-centre compared to the other three satellite pyramids of Khufu. This means that if there was a pyramid over the top, it was bigger than the other three satellite pyramids. Ishtov believes that this was the case, and maybe on purpose, because she was the mother of the king after all. Ishtov also explains that he believes the missing pyramid would have shared an identical design to the satellite pyramid of Snefru, the one located next to the Bent Pyramid. Now, I have never believed that these trial passages were those of a lost, destroyed or even just a planned pyramid but we should never discount an idea if we don't have the full picture. Before Ishtov got in touch, I never imagined it was even possible to have a pyramid in this location, because there is no sign of any superstructure, because there is a boat pit in the footprint and the causeway would be too close. Of course, the trial passages could not be the remains of a pyramid, unless the causeway and the boat pit were not part of the original plan. Ishtof also pointed me towards the internal chambers of the satellite pyramid of Snefru. They have a near identical design to the trial passages, minus the vertical shaft, which for all we know could well be constructional and scheduled to be filled in at a later date. Around the trial passages we don't see much evidence for a pyramid ever being here, no outline or signs in the bedrock, but we do have to remember if a new causeway and boat pit were built very close to and over the footprint of the missing satellite pyramid, it is very possible the bedrock was cut down quite substantially when the new work was being prepared. We know the satellite pyramid G1A is substantially higher than the bedrock surface to the north, which indicates that more groundwork could have been done beyond the main northern limit of the Eastern Cemetery. Also, this straight cut in the bedrock to the north of G1A is where Ishtof and I believe the original causeway started. 
This cut actually marks the edge of it. For reference, Jedefere's causeway was also cut into the ground and plastered. So it's a fair assumption that his father Khufu's would have been built in the same way. If this hypothesis is correct, it means the original causeway would have extended across the plateau to here, directly due east of the Great Pyramid, and although I'm guessing that George Reisner and his team did excavate all over the eastern side of the Great Pyramid, I'd like to know more about this area here. For example, so far I've been unable to find out much about this structure marked here, but I know that these are later rock-cut tombs here. So, when did a change occur and why? Well, the initial causeway may have been finished, or maybe it was never started or was incomplete at the time of Khufu's death. Either way, it is a fair assumption that this was the intended orientation, that this was the plan. And after modelling the original causeway onto accurate diagrams, well, it did feel too good to be true. The Valley Temple of Khufu was at the end of this strange bow-legged causeway. It was built this way because the latter section pointed towards Heliopolis, the centre of worship for the Court of Ra, which, under the rule of Jedefere, would go on to become far more influential, and even more so in the Fifth Dynasty. As we've seen, the new remodelled causeway certainly affected the section that ran across the plateau, but what about the section beyond? The causeway that we know, the final incarnation, changes direction some way off the plateau, which does seem like a strange way to plan the causeway. You'd think the obvious choice for a change in direction would be at the edge of the plateau itself. This would surely make the work easier, and I would also assume more structurally sound. Knowing that the latter section must point towards Heliopolis, in the same way that Jedefere's also did, I decided to extend this section to see where it intersects if it was to continue all the way to the high ground of the Giza Plateau, which, in my opinion, would be the natural place to change direction. Amazingly, the point where the latter section of the causeway intersects with the edge of the plateau is exactly at the point where the proposed original east-west causeway would have left the Giza Plateau. This is too much of a coincidence to be by accident, and now I'm even more convinced that this was the original causeway plan. The original causeway was meant to run due east to the edge of the plateau, and then turn towards Heliopolis, with the Valley Temple at the end. When the causeway was reconstructed, the architects would have had to work back from the location of the temple, ensuring the latter section of the causeway still pointed towards Heliopolis for religious reasons. But clearly, for some reason, the new causeway could not reach the plateau. There must have been a problem with this patch of ground marked here, and so the causeway changed direction before it reached the Giza Plateau which meant they had to remodel the section of the causeway on the plateau. This patch of land looks like it was avoided, and I would guess the reason must be related to underlying geology, or maybe geography or hydrology and so on. We know that this lowland area east of the plateau was prone to flooding. It could be waterlogged during the inundation, was swampy in places and so on. The construction of the causeway off the plateau would have been an incredibly difficult job, and to ensure its structural integrity, the architects would have had to assess the geography, geology, the topography, the limits of the Nile during the inundation, the direction of flow and quantity of rainwater runoff during storms and flash floods, the land quality, soil composition and so on. These all had to be surveyed, and all had to be considered by the architects for any ambitious building project. I believe that some time after Khufu's funeral, and after the Great Pyramid project was complete, the causeway did collapse somewhere around here. This was clearly unstable ground, probably waterlogged and therefore unsuitable to build on. This can be the only explanation for why the causeway was remodelled in such a dramatic way. 
By looking at the archaeological finds east of the Great Pyramid, Shlomo Ishtof believes the second causeway was actually built and remodelled in the 5th dynasty. The 5th dynasty of Egypt was when the sun cult of Ra, whose centre of worship was Heliopolis, was at its most powerful. At the time, construction projects and burials did continue at Giza, and it's possible the Great Pyramid was viewed as so much more than the tomb of Khufu, but as an enormous solar symbol, with its enormous size and the white Chura limestone reflecting the rays of the sun. But before the work took place, this mighty structure could well have had a ruined causeway, neglected by time, and this the greatest man-made structure, the most magnificent and iconic solar symbol in all of Egypt. It desperately needed work. The causeway needed to be remodelled. The structure had to be reconnected with Heliopolis. If the angled causeway came later, it means this boat pit also came later, being set alongside it and it had to be dug in what was likely the footprint of the now missing pyramid of the Queen Mother, the remnants of which are the trial passages. Interestingly, in the final burial pit of Queen Heta Perez, which I believe is in fact a reburial, we do have a canopic chest, we do have grave goods belonging to the Queen, we do have a sarcophagus, but we don't have a body. It's therefore possible her pyramid had already been broken into, and then robbed and ruined. The mummy taken or destroyed. We don't know. But such tomb robbing is not out of the question. With no body, there is nothing to entomb, so it's possible the later Egyptians dismantled the pyramid, but out of respect, they buried her belongings inside a pit situated just inside the eastern Mastaba field. With the pyramid removed, the space was cleared for a new causeway and an associated boat pit. Now we come across the first piece of evidence from Ishtof, that the rebuild took place in the 5th dynasty. The Great Pyramid Causeway Boat Pit is bottle shaped, and it also has a ramp. The only other boat pit lying along a causeway that survives today is from the Pyramid of Yunas of the 5th dynasty and this also has a ramp, and is also bottle shaped just like the Great Pyramid example. Therefore, the Khufu boat pit does have a somewhat distinct 5th dynasty design about it. At the 5th dynasty sun temple of Nyaser, next to the causeway there is also a ritual boat pit, and this also points to Heliopolis. This again is a direct parallel to the Khufu boat pit at Giza, indicating the causeway could have been constructed in the 5th dynasty, when the sun cult was most influential. According to Shlomo Ishtov, these boat pits did serve a very specific function. The ritual boat was taken down into the pit at night, but would emerge during the day, and this is the reason a ramp was needed. It wasn't Khufu's funerary boat, but was actually a ritual boat associated with sun worship. It's possible there was once a small temple associated with it for a service for the sun god Ra, unless the mortuary temple or the pyramid itself was considered a sun temple in the 5th dynasty. The possible dual function of the Great Pyramid as a tomb and possible sun temple is something I'll discuss in a future video. The more one looks into this whole theory that the Great Pyramid Causeway was remodelled in the 5th dynasty, the more evidence emerges. The design of the causeway base reliefs that were found by Selim Hassan in the 1930s are more 5th dynasty in style than 4th. More evidence the causeway was a later construct honouring the god King Khufu but also the sun cult as well. This block featuring Khufu from the north side of the causeway features the king wearing a scarf or stole, which was worn by pharaohs when performing the ritual visit to Heliopolis, and this on the causeway that we know pointed towards the court centre of Ra, aka Heliopolis. Remember, the court of Khufu was also a real thing and continued all the way up to and beyond the 26th dynasty. To the later people, I guess you could say that Khufu was like some kind of saint, someone who was honoured and worshipped throughout dynastic history. This splendid ring bearing Khufu's cartouche is actually from the 26th dynasty. 
We should also know that the causeways of Caffre and Mencore were not, as far as we know, decorated. So it's unlikely the original Khufu causeway from the 4th dynasty would have had any decoration at all. Such elaborate designs are more in keeping with the 5th dynasty. But again, even though there is good evidence for this, we have to come back to the question of why. Why did the 5th dynasty Egyptians even bother? Of course, we can't know the answer with the current level of knowledge, but let's not forget the Great Pyramid was the most spectacular monument, not just in Egypt, but the entire world. A huge statement and symbol of Egyptian religion, culture, power and prosperity, showing the masses and also the world exactly what the ancient Egyptians could accomplish. Not only was it a representation of the Mound of Creation, some say it was also a solar symbol. The shape of a pyramid is thought to represent the descending rays of the sun. And, as we know, most pyramids were faced with polished, highly reflective white Chura limestone, in order to give them a brilliant appearance when viewed from distance. Pyramids were also often named in ways that referred to solar luminescence. For example, the formal name of the Bent Pyramid located at Dashur was the Southern Shining Pyramid. Therefore, due to its size and splendour, and the fact it can be seen from Heliopolis itself, the Great Pyramid could well have been viewed as the most prominent solar symbol in Egypt. This was the 5th dynasty, the time of the powerful solar cult, and so, it makes sense to restore the important beacon of Egyptian religion and culture. Herodotus, the Greek historian, tells us it took 10 years to build and finally decorate the Great Pyramid Causeway. And, if correct, it shows that the remodelling of the Great Pyramid Causeway really was an enormous project. I do think that Shlomo Ishtof has a very good hypothesis, that the causeway was remodelled, and I still think it's a working hypothesis because of all the ifs, buts and maybes. But more often than not, that is just the nature of studying the Great Pyramid of the Giza Plateau. We have to study the limited material evidence available, especially the anomalies. Why didn't the causeway line up with the original Mustabas and satellite pyramids? Are the trial passages the remains of a pyramid? Why does Khufu's mother have such a low budget burial? Her tomb was found pretty much intact, so what happened to her mummy? Why is the causeway decorated in a 5th dynasty style, with a 5th dynasty boat pit complete with a ramp? Why doesn't the bend in the causeway come at the edge of the plateau? Well, I for one think that Shlomo Ishtof has given us the best answers for these questions, and there is even more evidence that I'll share in a future video. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.